we didn't receive the workbook, then message me and we'll get it sent across to you after the session. So as we're live, actually, I'm going to struggle to respond to your comments and any of the questions during the session, but I'll for sure we'll get back to you afterwards. No problem at all. Now, sit back, relax, open your mind, and most of all, enjoy. It's going to be a good one. So what is next for you? Have you really given it any thought lately? So we're halfway through 2023, right? Probably a little bit further than halfway through. So did you have a New Year's resolution? And how are they coming along? Big question, right? So ask yourself, where do you see yourself this time next year, by the end of this year? Maybe in two years, three years, five years. Have you thought about it recently? So the question really is, are you going to live your life to the full or are you going to be tiptoeing through it, trying to get safely to the end of it, which is what a lot of people are doing, right? So what's the one thing that you really want? It could be maybe more free time, more money. Um, how about better relationships or maybe improved health, fitness? So write down something that you really want, but you don't know how to get it or it just isn't happening. So the good news actually is, that if you come up with an idea, it means that you can do it for sure, because otherwise the idea would not have popped into your mind, right? it wouldn't have popped into your head. And it doesn't matter how big or crazy it is. If you thought of it, you can do it and you can be it and you can have it for sure, because you've already got what it takes inside of you. It's just a part of you that you haven't explored yet. That's all. And the thing is that you're living your life the way you're living your life right now. And you're getting the results that you're getting right now because that's exactly what you know how to do, right? You know how to do that. Um, like you know how to drive your car or you know how to um, ride your bike, but maybe you don't quite know how to fly a plane. And so what you're living, what everybody's living is really according to your current frame of reference, your current way of thinking, your current conditioning, your current programming. Now, you could call that your blueprint, right? So... Really, the only difference between you and another person who may already be living what you want is that they have a different blueprint. They think differently to your to what you want, to about what, what you want, than how you do at this moment. So it's like a person who's earning $10,000 a year thinks very differently to a person who's earning $100,000 a year. And that person, again, thinks very differently to someone who's earning 500 k a year. Now, we all have the, 20, the same 24 hours in the day, right? And the way we use them, though, is very, very different because we think differently. And because of that, we plan and we use our time differently. Um, actually, did a newsletter on this. Um, I think it came out on Monday. So uh, check it out on LinkedIn. And if you want it, then send me an email and I'll get it to you. Um, it's all about activity management because you really can't manage your time. You can only really manage your activities. And how we do that depends on how we're thinking. So I've got a question for you here. If you wanted to speak on the phone, you'd have to dial my number, wouldn't you? And my telephone number is on a frequency. And if I wanted to talk to you, I'd have to dial your number, your frequency. If I wanted to talk to my sister, I'd have to dial her phone number on her frequency. And if I accidentally mixed up some of the digits, I wouldn't be speaking to her. I would probably be speaking to a total stranger, right? So another example is um, you're watching a movie on Netflix, but now you decide that you want to watch the football match on Sky Sports. So you've got to change channels. You've got to change frequencies. You've got to tune into Sky Sports. It's like listening to a radio station where you tuned into Rock FM on 98.4 FM you are listening and experiencing rock music. Now you decide you want to maybe listen to classical music. So you tune into classical AM, which broadcasts at 100.8 AM frequency. And now that you tune into that frequency, you are experiencing listening to the classical music. Now, the thing is that classical AM didn't just start broadcasting because you tuned into it, right? They've probably been broadcasting for 50 years, maybe even longer. But because you didn't match that frequency, you haven't tuned into it, you haven't dialed into it. So you couldn't experience listening to it until you did dial into it. And it's exactly the same in life, right? Everything operates on a vibrational frequency. Everything is energy. We are energy. Everything is in constant motion. Nothing rests. Nothing is ever still. When you look at anything through a microscope, you'll see particles moving. 
So basically everything is a molecular structure that's vibrating at a certain speed. So you are a molecular structure and you're vibrating at a very high speed, but it's energy vibrating. Thoughts are also energy and they're vibrating at certain speeds. So now that we sort of know that, it, it becomes really clear that your goal and whatever it is that you want also operates on its own frequency, right? And what you don't want also operates on its own frequency. So the question really is, what are you tuning into? What frequency are you tuning into? Are you tuning into what you want or are you tuning into what you don't want? Now, the thing is that everything that ever was and ever will be is already here. Right? The, the way to fly a plane has always been here. It just took the Wright brothers to figure out how to do it. You know, the way to make our smartphones has always been here. All the materials were always here. We just didn't know how to process them and put them together until really quite recently. But we didn't ship in anything from another planet. It was already here. So everything is already here. The thing is that we just became aware of how to use those materials and put them together. So if everything that ever was and ever will be is already here, then what you want is also already here. You just have to tune into it. Right? You've got to attract it. Now, there's a lot of talk and a lot of written things written about the law of attraction, um, but it's actually a secondary law. So it's the law of vibration that activates the law of attraction. So you have to be in a certain vibration. You've got to be operating on a certain frequency to attract what you want. So in fact, you have to operate on the frequency of what you want to meet up with it and experience it. In other words, you have to be it to manifest it and to live it. And you know, there's a saying, seeing is believing but it's actually believing is seeing you because you can't achieve anything beyond what you believe is actually possible. So what do you believe is possible? So really to achieve your goal, to get what you want, all you really need to do is, is change your blueprint and get onto that frequency of your goal. That's it. Thanks for joining. Good luck. No, not really. I'm uh, going to tell you how to do that now. Okay. Let's have a look. So, Another piece of great news is that you, you actually achieving what you want isn't down to luck, coincidence or circumstance. It's based on a system. And all of life and all of success is based on scientific universal laws. So there was a gentleman called Werner von Braun. He was known as the father of the space program back in the 60s. And he said that the natural laws of the universe are so precise that we can send a rocket to the moon and bring it back. And we can time the landing within the precision of a fraction of a second. And President Kennedy asked him back in I think 1963 what it would take to get a man to the moon and then bring him safely back to Earth again. And what Werner's response was the will to do it. Very wise words. Really. So all you really have to do is to decide what you really want and just make sure that it's big and beautiful, right? That it excites you. And at the same time, it should be scaring the bejeebies out of you as well. You really, really don't have to concern yourself with how you're going to do it at all. Because the thing is that it's a new thing. You're thinking of something new. You're thinking outside of the box. So you're not going to know how to do it at the moment. right? But all you, um, all you can know is that everything you will need will come to you when you need it because everything is already here in one form or another. So you're just going to be tuning into it. And then once you've decided what it is that you really want, you've got to ask yourself two questions. The first one is, am I able? Now, yes, you are, right? You are definitely able to do it. Because again, if you couldn't do it, you wouldn't have thought of it. Simple as that. Now, the second question is, am I willing? Am I willing to do whatever it takes? And if you can answer yes to that, then you have what we call a goal. And it's an exciting goal, something to really be working towards. Now, what a goal does is it gives us direction. And really, without a goal, we're quite lost. So, you know, you wouldn't get into your car and then drive off if you didn't know where you were going, really, would you? You'd be driving around aimlessly, possibly forever. So um, think of a cruise ship that's leaving the harbour. So maybe it's going from Southampton to Miami and there's a crew and the captain on board. 
And so because the captain knows where he needs to go, they set sail to their destination and he directs the ship to the destination because the captain's in charge. Now, imagine the same vessel without a captain or a crew, right? It probably wouldn't even get out of the Southampton port. And even if it did, it'd be very unlikely that it would reach its destination of Miami, right? It might end up in Africa instead of Miami. Now, the thing is that you are the captain of your ship, right? You are in charge of your ship, of your life, but you've got to take charge and you've got to take control. Now, one of the laws of nature is order. Everything is in order. So before there's a flower, a seed is planted and it's nurtured, right? First grows the buds and then appears the flower. Night comes after day and after day comes night. Summer always comes after spring and spring always comes after winter. There is order. Now we are a part of nature. So that means that when we are in order, we feel good and we become creative. Right? So setting a goal gives us that direction and order. And because we will become creative, we're going to start thinking of different ways and different things um, as to how to start achieving that goal. So that's that's when the how is going to start, be, start becoming apparent to us. Now, the true purpose of a goal isn't actually the result that you're going to get, right? But of course, that's really great. So, you know, you've set a goal, maybe you want a house, a car, a holiday, a fitness level, maybe you want a promotion, maybe you want more money in the bank, you know, better relationships, whatever it is, it's nice, right? That's going to be the result uh, of your goal. But the real purpose of your goal is to make you grow. Now, again, when we look at nature and we're part of nature, nature is always growing. It's always for well-being. It's pro-life, right? And the universe is always expanding. And because we are part of nature, for us to feel good, we have to be growing. We have to be working to something and we have to be growing. Because if we're not growing, we're disintegrating. And that really doesn't feel good. Right? So a goal helps us to explore ourselves. We have to become that person with the goal achieved. So we have to grow into that person. And that's what makes us feel good. So when you set a goal and you answered, yes, I'm able, and yes, I'm willing, then there is absolutely no doubt that you will grow into that person that's living that goal. And when we're growing, we feel good. So when we feel good, we're attracting good. Now, from right now, this moment, start thinking and feeling and acting like you would do with your wish fulfilled, like with your goal already achieved. So how would you be thinking? How would you be feeling? How would you be acting if you were already at your goal? And when you start to do that, you will really very quickly start to see some very positive changes. And I would love to hear how you get on with that. So give it a week and see what happens. Right? Now I'm going to read you a true story from the book U Squared by Price Pritchard. I'm sitting in a quiet room at the Millcroft Inn, a peaceful little place hidden back among the pine trees about an hour out of Toronto. It's just past noon, late July, and I'm listening to the desperate sounds of a life or death struggle going on a few feet ahead. There's a small fly burning out the last of its short life's energies in a futile attempt to fly through the glass of the window pane. The whining wings tell the poignant story of the fly's strategy, try harder. But it isn't working. The frenzied effort offers no hope for survival. Ironically, the struggle is part of the trap. It is impossible for the fly to try hard enough to succeed at breaking through the glass. Nevertheless, this little insect has staked its life on reaching its goal through raw effort and determination. This fly is doomed. It will die there on the windowsill. Now across the room, Ten steps away, the door is open. Ten seconds of flying time and this small creature could reach the outside world it seeks. With only a fraction of the effort now being wasted, it would be free of this self-imposed trap. The breakthrough possibility is there. It would be so easy. Why doesn't the fly try another approach? Something dramatically different. How did it get so locked in on the idea that this particular route and determined effort offer the most promise for success? What logic is there in continuing until death to seek a breakthrough with more of the same? No doubt this approach makes sense to the fly. Regrettably, it's an idea that will kill. 
trying harder isn't necessarily the solution to achieving more. It may not offer any real promise for getting what you want out of life. Sometimes, in fact, it's a big part of the problem. If you stake your hopes for a breakthrough on trying harder than ever, you may kill your chances for success. By the way, it's a great book, so definitely recommend you get it. Now, my mentor, Bob Proctor, you might know him from the movie The Secret. He quotes from this book quite a lot, actually. And I'm a mindset and success coach with the Proctor Gallagher Institute. And I basically help people help themselves to live the life that they really want to live. Very rewarding job. So, like I said before, maybe you want more time or more money freedom. Um, because who doesn't want that, right? Now, lots of my clients are busy executives and business owners who work their little asses off for 60 plus hours a week. And they've got, you know, the money, they're financially kind of okay, but they've no time at all to enjoy it. And maybe that sounds familiar to you. Certainly I was like that not really that many years ago. So you're either working, catching up or thinking about work. And when then you do get some free time, you've got, you're too tired to really enjoy it. And there's, there's nowhere near enough quality time to spend with your family and your friends. And when you do that, you do that with a clear and a calm mind. Um, so, and you know, never mind all of the other things that you might want to do, like maybe your hobby that you want to start pursuing. And there's probably not, if any, time to really keep fit and healthy either. So most people want more time and more money, okay, to do the things that they want to do. So start to see me as your fairy godmother. So if you tell me what you want, I'm going to show you how to get it. So what do you want? What is next for you? Have you thought about it? Now, the great thing is I've not made any of this stuff up, right? Um, the material that I teach has been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years. But it's just that not many people know about it or, or truly understand it. So let me ask you to write something down now. So what would you like to change? What would you like to improve in your life? And just give yourself a couple of minutes to really seriously think about that or come back to it. Right? So what is it that you would like to change? And what would you like to improve in your life? What are you missing out on at the moment? What would you like? What would your life be like if if that thing that you wanted, if you could have that or be that and do, or do that? Okay, and then think of how amazing that would be for you and for your loved ones, right? Because when you feel good, everybody else around you gets the best out of you. They don't say for no reason when you're on a plane that you've got to put your own oxygen mask on first. If you're not good, you're really no good to anybody else. Right. So now my question is, how long have you wanted what you want? Right. So how long have you been trying to make those changes? Some people, years, right? So are you like that poor little fly? Are you trying again and again? You keep going, you work a little harder, you do a little more, but not really much is changing or happening and you're just tiring yourself out and getting frustrated. And good old Einstein said, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and then expecting a different result. Well, that's just not going to happen, right? So maybe you haven't yet to move towards what you really want. Maybe you've actually pushed that dream away because you feel you haven't got time, you haven't got the resources to do it. But remember, you don't need to know the how. All you need to know is the what. Now start to think, what, what, what would it be like if you could actually make some of those changes? Right? Because aren't you getting fed up with being fed up? I certainly got really fed up with being fed up. And so what I want you to do is just for a moment, for a teeny tiny little moment, imagine that what you want is not impossible. That it could actually become your reality. How would you feel? And then what action would you be taking? So, in fact, now think of an action that you would be taking if you believed that it was possible to get what you want and then do that today or it's evening for most people. So maybe at the latest do that tomorrow and then watch what happens and then take the next step. The, the road will sort of open itself up to you once you start. So are you up for improving your precious one time beautiful life? Because if you do, then you have to change your approach like the little fly. And you have to start looking for that open door and then fly through it. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing to realize is that you become what you think about. Now, all the great leaders, all the teachers, all the wise people, all the philosophers, they'd actually disagreed on most things, as we know, 
But on this one, they absolutely agreed. You totally become what you think about. So I'll just have some quotes here. So Marcus Aurelius, he was a Roman emperor. A man's life is what his thoughts make of it. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, a man is what he thinks about all day long. And William James said, the greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitude of mind. And in the Bible, it says, all things are possible to him that believeth. Because when you believe, you will for sure succeed. So what are you thinking about? What is your dominant thought throughout the day? Is it about how you can or how you can't do it? Is it about what you want or is it about what you don't want? What frequency are you operating on? So what we tend to do is we tend to give most of our attention to what we don't want because we've conditioned like that. We've been taught to do that from a very young age. But guess what? When you're thinking about what you don't want, you're going to get more of the same because you become what you think about. So you're going to get more of what you don't want. So the trick is to learn to focus on what you do want, which actually is easier said than done. And some days are easier than other days. right? So we've really been conditioned from a very early age, most of us, that we can't always have what we want, right? That we need to explore and dwell on the negative stuff. Get to have to get to the bottom of it. So Bob actually calls this the report card syndrome. Now I went to school in Holland and at school at the time you got graded from zero to 10, 10 being the best. So I'd come home with quite a few eight, nines and tens on most of the topics. And then maybe a six or a seven on one or two. And then the focus was on the six and the seven rather than really celebrating the good results, we focus more attention on um, the, the, the more negative results. So I want you to think about the last few days, the last week or so. So what went well? What would be what we would call your win of the week? Now, do you need some time to think about it? Weird, right? But if I asked you what went wrong, a bit easier, right, for most people. Well, that's because of how you're conditioned to think. It's habitual. And like there's so many other things that are in life that are habitual. So, in fact, most of the things that we do are habitual. We're on autopilot probably 95 to 98% of the time. If you think back on your day-to-day, -day, there'll be a lot of stuff that you don't even really remember doing or you just automatically did it. So... Lots of things habitual, habitual thinking, habitual feeling, habitual acting, habitual behavior, all of that. Now, a habit is something that you do without giving it any conscious thought. So it's really when your body knows how to do something better than your mind does. So we really have an enormous amount of habit, right? We've got physical habits, but like I said, habitual ways of thinking and feeling and acting. But we, and we don't tend to question our habits. We just sort of go along with them. Now, a habit is created when we do something, the same thing, over and over again. So it's through constant space repetition that we are creating <clears throat> habits. Now, this was a funny one, and I actually did this myself the other day. So if you ever reorganize your wardrobe or maybe your kitchen cupboards, and maybe you moved the cups from the cupboard in the kitchen on the left-hand side to a cupboard on the right-hand side, and you keep going to the cupboard on the left-hand side, right? Even months later, you're still doing it because you're doing it without thought because it's been such a habit. Now, of course, a lot of our habits are really, really handy, right? So your morning routine or driving your car or making a cup of tea, lots of things that are habitual. It's great that we don't have to consciously think about them. But I want you to do a little exercise. And some of you may have already done this, but it really is one of the best ways I can explain about habits. So I want you to shake out your arms and then cross your arms in front of you like that. Okay. Now shake your arms down and now cross your arms in the opposite way. You're thinking about it, right? Okay. Now shake your arms out again and again cross your arms opposite to how you normally would cross them. Okay. And then do one more last time. Shake out and cross your arms again the way you opposite to the way that you would normally do it. Okay, that's your exercise done, right? So, the first time I asked you to do that, you had to really think about that, right? 
and then you probably were fiddling around with your arms and you were wondering if you were doing it right. The second time, maybe a little bit less thought, but still quite, quite a conscious effort. And even the third time. Now, you can imagine that as you do it more and more often, it's going to become more natural. But if I ask you to do the same thing again tomorrow, you probably have to go and think about it again, right, and work it out again. So we have habitual ways of doing things like crossing your arms. And to change that takes, takes awareness, takes conscious thought, and takes deliberate action. And you've got to be persistent, right? So for that to, to turn into your habit of crossing your arms the other way, that would take probably quite a bit of time and effort. Now, what I also want to ask you is when you get dressed, which leg do you put into your pants first? Is it your left one or your right one? So I bet you you're trying them on now, right? So why is that? You probably never even thought of it, right? So why is that? Well, most likely it's because the person that was dressing you when you were little, you may have stuck your left leg out and they said, no, no, other leg, tapped your leg and, oh, no, other leg. And then you swap legs and put your right leg in first. So we've been basically conditioned by the person that got us dressed to put our right or our left leg into our pants or trousers first. Now, the reason that they taught us that is because they were conditioned. It was their habit to do it that way around, right? Interesting. So now every time you get dressed over the next week, you're going to think about this, I bet you. So the thing is that we never even thought about that up to now. Very unlikely, unless you've been watching me for a while, that you've been thinking about that. Sometimes I do the exercise with which weight, which shoe do you put on your foot first. But we never questioned it, basically. So this is exactly the same with any other conditioning, with any beliefs that we hold. We've been conditioned to do things in a certain way, to think in a certain way, to act and to behave in a certain way, to react in a certain way, to eat certain food, all conditioned. And most of our conditioning was done when we were very little. And as we've grown up, we don't question it. We don't explore whether that conditioning, whether that belief is actually true. We don't even question it when we sort of know that it's not serving us, it's not moving us towards what we want, but we still don't question it because it's so habitual. And we don't really understand that it is our conditioning that is what's holding us back. It's not our circumstances, it's the conditioning and the way that we think that's holding us back from doing and getting what we really want. Now that's what that little fly was doing. It believed that it was the only way to get out of that room. And it killed all his chances of success, right? So your current belief about your goal, about what you want, about why you can't have it, why you why it can't happen, why it's not possible, why it hasn't happened, it's just a story, right? Question the story. Where did it come from? Because it isn't true. Now start changing the story, start re-evaluating that belief, and start telling yourself a different story, keep doing it over and over again and watch what happens. You'll start to do things really quite quickly, very differently. Now, bear in mind that you do have to change, consciously replace a bad habit with a good habit, because otherwise you just implement another bad habit. So consciously start thinking about how you can rather than why you can't. Now, I said earlier that we do things the way we do things because we know how to do them. And we live the way we live because we know how to do that. We, we're earning what you're earning because you know how to do that. You're working the hours you're working because you know how to do that. You're in the relationship you're in because you know how to be in those relationships. So that's your blueprint. So if you want to change something, you really have to change that blueprint. And you need to become aware of how to live the way that you want to live. So you've got to learn how to do it how to work the hours that you want to work, how to earn the money that you want to earn, how to have the relationship that you want, you know, how to have the health that you want, the fitness level that you want. And it's just the same, like you have to learn how to walk or how to ride your bike or how to drive a car or how to do your timetables or how to work your phone or how to do your new job. Right? Exactly the same. Now, the thing is that there are people who are living what you want right now, probably a lot of them, in fact. So... The only difference between you and them 
is the way that you think. Okay, so let's deal, dive into that a little bit deeper. So we have two parts to our mind. We've got many more, but we'll focus on two parts. So there is a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Now, the conscious mind is what we call the individual mind. It's our thinking mind. It's where ideas and thoughts flow into our conscious mind. And the conscious mind has the ability to accept or reject a thought or an idea. So we choose what we're going to give airtime to, basically. Now, once we've accepted an idea, we then have the ability, so your conscious mind then has the ability to label it good or bad, or to label it positive or negative, right? Completely free choice. And really, the only freedom we've got is the freedom of thought. No one can make you think anything you don't want to think. So conscious mind, reasoning mind, individual mind, it has to, it, it decides whether it accepts or rejects an idea or a thought, and then it labels it good or bad. Now, your subconscious mind is the universal mind. It's our feeling mind. Um, it's where everything is connected and everyone is connected. So this is where our habits live, where our conditioning sits, where our paradigms rule the roost. Our paradigm is a multitude of habits or your belief system. That's how we describe it. So you remember how I said that we're on autopilot most of the time? Well, that's your paradigm operating from your subconscious mind. right? So where the conscious mind can accept and reject, the subconscious mind can only accept. So it accepts everything that the conscious mind impresses upon it. So I want you to close your eyes, unless you're driving, then don't. So if it's safe to do, close your eyes. Now, imagine you're on holiday in Mexico and you're staying in a luxurious hotel. You've just landed and you've got a private car to the hotel. You step out of the car and you can feel the heat descend upon you. Boy, it's hot. Now you wait for a little old lady to pass and then you walk into the lobby of the hotel and your suitcases are being taken care of. It's nice and cool in the lobby. You can feel the air conditioning cool down your skin. You settle in, you get your bikini or your trunks on and you pick up a bright orange massive beach towel and you make your way down the elevator, back into the lobby, out to the back of the hotel and then you walk past the pool. You can smell a little bit of chlorine. Then you walk down some steps and now you're on the beach and you can feel the hot sun sprinkling on top of your feet in your flip-flops. You walk over to a very, very comfy sun lounger. You put down your towel and you sit down. You can feel the sun on your skin. You can smell the coconut sun cream that you're rubbing in. You're all done and you recline your chair and relax. Now here's the waiter. So you order an ice cold cocktail and you close your eyes. You can hear the waves crashing on the beach and there's a funny sounding bird chirping. Oh, there's your drink. It's lovely and cool and refreshing. You look over the beach and see a clear blue sky. There's that bird flying across the sun. The sea is clear blue and you can see a couple of sailing boats. Oh, this drink is just delightful. Oh, what's that? A cruise ship is passing along the horizon. Now open your eyes. Were you in Mexico? <laughs> so I'll tell you, I bet you you were in Mexico and you could smell it and you could feel it. Right? So what it means is that the thoughts that you think, the things that you're imagining, the thoughts that you give attention to, and the thoughts that you internalize, you get emotionally involved with, you believe to be true. Right? Your body acts on that and reacts to that. So to put it another way, the thoughts you, you think and the way that you label them are impressed upon your subconscious mind, and that is what controls the actions of your body, right? So according to the law of cause and effects, another natural law, every action has a reaction. So every action you take has a reaction, and this reaction is what we call your results. Now, take a look at the results in your life. Are they what you want them to be? Okay, so maybe in some areas they are, but for sure there'll probably be things that you want, you know, that are not happening and that are not how you want them to be. So it's good to realize that everything that we experience is created twice. It's first created in the mind and then it manifests in real life. Okay? So, so think about your mobile phone or the chair that you're sitting on, the clothes that you're wearing, uh, the house that you're living in, the car you're driving, the business that you work in. All of that was first a thought in somebody's mind 
and then it manifested because that person pursued it, was persistent and consistent and made it happen. Okay. So everything was first to thought. Everything was first imagined by somebody and then it manifested in real life. Okay. Now, it, the same applies to your results. Right? You imagine them first and then they manifest. The thing is that we don't realize that what we're imagining, we don't even think about it most of the time. So we're using our imagination mostly in a way that doesn't serve us. We're imagining things that we don't want. We're imagining things that we don't want to happen. We imagine, you know, we're worrying about things rather than imagining how we could be, how we want it to be. So ask yourself, what are you imagining? So you've got to be very, very aware of the thoughts that you're thinking, right? Because your dominant thoughts are what materializes in your life. You become what you think about. Now, the thing is that we, we can believe that we believe something, right? We can think that we have a certain belief about something. Yes, I can do that. You know, I can, yeah, I know I can do um, a particular sport or I know I can earn a certain amount of money. I know I can only work 20 hours a week. No, I know I can do this, but you're not doing it, right? So, this is about what you are really thinking, what's really going on deep inside you, deep in your conscious mind, subconscious mind, because it's your subconscious mind that basically rules the roost with the paradigms. So if you want to know what you're really thinking, if you want to know what you're truly believing, then you've got to look at your results because everything in your outside world is a direct reflection of what's going on inside of you. And that's great news, right? Because now you can look at your results and now you know that all you really have to do is start to change the way that you think. Because if you want to change it, you've got to change the way that you think. And then when you change the way that you think about something, you will then start to change your beliefs. You change your paradigms. And you would then, because of that, you're going to start taking different actions. Right? So, and a different action means you're going to get a different reaction, which is a different result. So the thing is that if you believe that you can't do something, you'll take a very, very different action than if you believe that you can't do something. In fact, if you believe you can't do something, you probably take no action whatsoever. So if you believe something is possible, you will think, feel and act and behave very differently than when you believe it isn't possible. Now think back to that thing that you want and just suspend with your disbelief and then imagine it could be possible. What action would you be taking? So take the action and do it now. And the next step will become apparent. So how then do you become successful at achieving your goals? So let's first explore what success is. So really success and life are governed by universal laws. And a law is inflexible. It applies to everyone, every time, for everything. So that's what we have to learn. Really. We have to work in harmony with those universal laws so that we can live the life that we really want to live. Now, one of the universal laws that we are totally familiar with is the law of gravity. Um, so we understand it and we understand that when you throw a ball into the air, it's going to come down. That when you jump off a wall, you're going to fall down. And we work in harmony with that law. And because we work in harmony with it, we can build our houses, we can drive our cars, we can fly a plane and so on. And we, and, and we work with it so that the law serves us, serves us to our advantage. Now, most of the other laws of the universe we are less familiar with, right? So, you know, we mentioned a few of them already earlier. So the law of vibration, the law of attraction, the law of order, the law of cause and effect. And there are a few more, and we can explore those in another session at some point. But once we understand how these laws work for life, then we can align with them and we can apply them and then we can have those laws work to our advantage too. Now, success is a system. And when you follow a system, you're going to be successful, right? So Earl Nightingale wrote the uh, book, Think and Grow Rich, another great book. Do recommend you get it. Um, he said, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. I don't actually know if he said it, but he definitely quoted it anyway. So success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Progressive, which means that when you are working towards your goal, you are successful. So a successful person is someone who deliberately is doing something that he or she wants to do. They decided what they wanted and they chose to do it and they are doing it. That's a successful person, whatever it is. Right? Now, 
most of us believe that we are successful once we have achieved our goal, that it's the result that makes us successful. But that's actually back to front because achieving your goal is a result of being successful already. So, you know, you achieve your fitness level after you've successfully done your exercises over time. You get that promotion at work after you've successfully done your job. You receive the money after you've successfully rendered a service. You eat a delicious cake after you've successfully put the ingredients together. Okay. So the success comes before the result. So as long as you're progressively realizing your worthy ideal, your goal, you are successful. And the key here is to really get that and to celebrate it every step of the way. Celebrate all your little milestones. Every time you move, do something that moves you towards your goal, whether that's something you're thinking or something you're doing, celebrate it and you're going to start feeling great, right? So what is it that you want? What is your C-type goal? What is something you really want you haven't done before? You've no clue how to do it, but you know that you really want it, right? It's, it excites you, said this before, it excites you, but it scares the S-H-I-T out of you at the same time. Now, <clears throat> that's the goal to go for. That is the goal that's going to light a fire inside of you. That's what's going to cause you to grow and make you feel really alive. Right? And let's face it, we're here on this earth to be alive, to live, right? not to just merely exist. So really, every moment we live is a moment closer to the end. Right? We don't know how long we have. Could be five years, could be 10 years, could be 100 years, could be five minutes, could be 10 hours, who knows? There are two things that we can be certain of. And that's that everything always changes. And at some point, we're going to die. Okay, so what are we going to do in the meantime? Do you want to look back on life where you gave it your all and then you went after what you wanted and you achieved it? Isn't that what you'd want to look back on? And now you know that you can achieve it, right? Because it's all a system. You just follow it and you can have and do whatever you want. Now, think back to the exercise that we did with crossing your arms. So it would take time to change that habit, wouldn't it? Now, unless someone kept reminding you, it's very likely that you'd forget about it and you probably wouldn't be able to per permanently change that very easily. So it's the same with your habitual way of living. It's very difficult to change your paradigms by yourself. They're really sneaky and pesky and they, you know, they actually dictate your logic. So they dictate the way that you're thinking and they tend to talk you out of the exact thing that you actually really want to be doing. Okay, so... What, you've, what we all really need is someone to pull you out of that comfort zone, give you some fresh ideas, you know, get you to keep your mind open, hold you accountable and then stop you from drifting. Because really, on the way to your goal, you can't really afford to be drifting, can you? And that's what my training actually does. So for sure, for sure, I will stop you from drifting on your way to your goal. And when you apply all the learning through a daily study, for sure, you're going to achieve the goal that you want. You're going to reach that goal that you want. Now, think of this, right? Anyone who's good at anything has a mentor or a coach or an instructor, an expert showing them how to do things. I don't think of tennis players or footballers or musicians or artists, athletes, swimmers, anybody. They all have a coach, an expert in the field to teach them the best way to do something, right? So a tennis coach shows you how to hit the ball in the most effective way and then corrects you when you're off track. So a few years ago, I wanted to learn how to play jazz piano. When I was a lot younger, I did a bit of classical piano. I'm not really any good, but, you know, reasonable. Anyway, so I wanted to learn how to play jazz piano. So for a little while, I had a tutor that came on a Thursday. And if I hadn't practiced over the weekend, by Tuesday, I'd be at it. I'd be doing it, right? Because I knew she was coming on Thursday. And that's how I learned to play a little bit of jazz because she held me accountable. And because I knew I had an appointment with her, I would go and do my practice. Now, I gave that up after a while. I still want to learn how to play the jazz piano. But I keep telling myself, I'll do it tomorrow, next week, next month, next never. Right? And that's what most people do with a goal. That's a, a goal that's something that really excites them, like I said, but it's something that's a little bit way out there. Um, and that's what happens. We'll do it tomorrow. We put it off. But tomorrow never comes. Right. So start thinking about what it is that you really want and realize that you can't actually really achieve that by applying you know, the, 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 the success rules. 
So what we say is that we say that practice makes perfect, but it doesn't. What it does is practice makes permanent. So what are you practicing? What thoughts are you thinking over and over again? No, constant spaced repetition is what creates new thought patterns, is what creates new conditioning, it's what creates new behavior and actions, and of course, then your results. But it takes a little bit of time. I give this example, walking through a field. So I have dogs and I walk through lots of fields. Anyway, so, so everybody must have walked through a field and there's been sort of a, a, a pathway that's been there. We all walk on the pathway. So now think of that field as your brain. So you've got neurons in your brain that are wired together in a certain way, which is why you're doing some of the things that you're doing. Okay, so now you're walking in the field and you decide that you're going to veer off the path and you're going to, I don't know, walk two yards away from the path and that's where you want to walk. Now, the first time you do that, the grass is going to pop back up again, right? So the next day, you probably can't even see where you've walked, but you walk on the same same path again so now the grass stays down a little bit and the next day the third day you can probably sort of see where you walked the day before so you walk over that path again that new path again and the grass stays down a little bit more now as you walk along that pathway that new pathway over and over and over again at some point the grass is going to stay down a little bit later that that grass is not going to grow anymore because someone keeps walking on it so you're basically sort of creating a new pathway in the field you do the same in your brain. You create a new pathway for, for the, a new way that the neurons in your brain are, connect, are connecting. But it takes practice, right? And it takes effort, a bit of effort and it takes focus and you've got to be consistent. And that's what I will help you with is to, is to keep doing that so that you make sure that you're doing that over and over again and that you're doing it in the right way. So let's work out what it is that you really want. And then let me show you how to get it and hold you accountable and stop you from drifting. So if you want to find out more about how we could work together, so I teach a six month thinking into results training, then just message me and we'll get you on your way to bigger and better. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention before I forget is that I'm offering um, a free coaching session with a free follow up session to the first 10 people that are going to message me. So make sure that you reach out uh, and we'll get some time in the diary to get you on your way. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. It's the best, best thing to do. Um, okay, so let's finish with a little exercise. Write down a situation that isn't how you want it to do, how you want it to be, sorry. So how do you feel when you think about that? Now imagine a situation that is the way you do want, that same situation in the way that you do want it to be. How do you feel? So what I want you to do for the next seven days, every morning and every evening, write down the situation, how you want it to be, right? And then start acting as if it is already that way. Even if it isn't, start acting as if it is. Write it down in the morning, write it down in the evening, and then see it in your imagination the way you want it over and over and over again. Now, for sure, something will change for you within a week. And let me know, right? Because this is the kind of thing I love. Let me know what happened. Love to hear from you. Okay, well, I think that's it from me. It was really great to have you here. Reach out if you've got any questions at all. And if you're ready to shake things up a bit and make a change. Because, and I always say this, if not now, then when? I'll see you soon. Thanks for joining.